Okay, so I want to check out my apple trees before I go here, just so I can look at them later on, kind of compare and contrast. Also, I want to talk about what's worked so far and maybe what hasn't worked as well as I thought it would. Anyway, come on, Batman. The bulk of these trees were planted in 2016 in March. Um, these are mostly cider apples of French and English and Spanish origin, as well as some dual purpose apples and a few American type cider apples. What I did was plant a whole bunch of different types of apples, some on more vigorous rootstocks, some on more dwarf, dwarfing rootstocks, just to kind of get an idea of what works and what doesn't work. Um, so we got here kind of in this first sort of block, and this first block kind of is that corner post there to another post up there. So this is kind of like a rectangle on top of a larger rectangle here. So probably about 80-ish trees currently growing right now. 90% of them are apples. There's a few cherries. There's a few rootstocks growing in here. I think in total I maybe ordered or planted 100 or so trees. And Lost some of them over the years, whether it was from uh, disease died back or from frankly snapping off in the wind or just from not having enough water. But you know, we're probably in our 2020 in mid June. We're probably at a point where we can kind of start to draw some conclusions about what's worked well and what hasn't worked so well. So, this first block that I kind of mentioned, a little bit in a tough spot because we have really strong southern exposure here, and there's not too much shade from other trees in the area. So some of the guys here, with the influence of not having uh, ample supply of water and you know pest pressure, whether it's insects or gophers, disease, uh, struggled a little bit, but some have pulled through better than others. So the first one I want to talk about is this guy, which is Rain de Palm, which is a French apple. And this one is growing, or all my Rain de Palm actually are growing on the Geneva 222 rootstock. It's a semi-dwarfing rootstock said to produce something, you know, somewhere in the order of 40% the size of a standard tree. And this one seems to be going pretty good. I mean, that's a, um, a nice solid trunk. It does have support. Graft union's a little funky here. It's kind of curved. You can kind of see there's the graft down there. But it seems to fruit pretty consistently and it seems to grow pretty well. We've got a, uh, a decent fruit set this year on these laterals. And what I also kind of like about this guy is we do have a pretty nice central leader there. Um, it's interesting. This one is a very, very old French bittersweet apple set to be high, medium high in tannin, relatively high in sugar and quite low in acid. So a great cider apple. Production isn't crazy, right? There's this branch for instance on his one apple on it but the tree's only five years old so I'm not gonna hold it against it but it's got nice foliage it's got nice growth uh, nice laterals it's coming out a good angle and this is also a g22 with rain day palm this one's got more fruit and a whole lot more fruit you can't really see it in this angle on the central leader and it's kind of interesting because depending on the uh, sources you look at this is either resistant or very susceptible to fire blight and I have never ever seen fire blight on this tree. Now this could be the case that it is fire blight resistant which I would be a little bit surprised but I think more of what it is is that it's an early blooming apple so since it blooms a little bit earlier it kind of avoids the peak fire blight infection season. Not sure but I've never seen fire blight on here so whether it's resistant or not it seems to be able to escape a lot of the damage. One thing I did notice that was interesting is you'll see on this tree, and the less now, but lots of these um, dead flowers that just never pollinated on the spurs here. So I don't know if this was an issue of pollination, was a late frost, or something else, but the apples that are on here are quite healthy, minus um, some damage from the leaf rollers. So this one, so far, looks like it's a good contender for the climate I'm in. I haven't made cider from it yet, but I'm hoping to do this this year. I think I've got five or so of these trees, so I think I should have enough to 
uh, actually make some cider. Oh, here's one that fell off. I don't know what happened to it, but got knocked off somehow. Anyway, quite a healthy tree. I have lots of vigorous growth. If you look here, this is about eight inches or so of active growth this year. Uh, I pinched off the terminal bud here to try and encourage more spur growth so I can eat more fruit next year. But overall, like I said, pretty good. There's a little G890 rootstock. Now here's another interesting one. So this is uh, Muscadet de Dieppe, also on G22. And this is probably the healthiest fruiting specimen I have here. Same age as those other guys. And you can see, the trunk is much, much smaller. And this one, honestly, grows kind of weird. These branches are very spindly. They kind of grow straight up at a weird angle. And this weird thing that's been happening is a lot of these upper stems have no buds on them, no active buds. Uh, the top portions have leaves, but this middle part doesn't. So I think it kind of renders it susceptible to sunburn. Um, I have cut out some fire blight lesions on here. It seems like you get the blossom blight it progresses, no Batman, it progresses to twig blight and then it kind of lignifies off in the stem. So this past spring I went in and I cut off as much as I could and I think it's done the tree well. Um, despite being a odd and sort of wanky tree, it seems to be very productive. It seems to have fruit on it every year and quite a nice amount of fruit. <laughs> I think honestly this one has more fruit on the tree than actual leaves which is interesting, but um, this is a very old French apple. Uh, very nice, bittersweet, very aromatic. It's a small apple, it's like in the size of a large crab. But um, yeah, so more to, more to see with that one, but um, here's another Muscadet to dip, and you can kind of see this one, the leaves aren't quite as healthy, but um, again, lots and lots of fruit. You know, I've been thinning this as the, it's been plowing it. And you can see I've kind of, especially on the southern side, I've added a outdoor white latex paint to try and protect not only from borers, which are kind of an issue here, but also from any sun scald. This one, which is looking more and more promising, is Harrison. And Harrison is an old, old, old American cider apple uh, originating from New Jersey or on the New York era area and uh, this is on I think G30 I believe I can't remember but this is the first year on this guy we've had a nice fruit crop and you can see it is a significant fruit crop uh, I've never noticed any disease or pest issue with this and it kind of struggled the first few years but it kind of looks like it's starting to set in its own kind of adapt to the situation and for a tree that's fruiting as much as this one is it's still pushing really nice new growth. We've got active bud growth. And, you know, depending on how things go, I think this could be a, uh, a good apple for this area. We'll see. Another really, really spindly muscadet. I mean, like, look at how small these leaves are and it's still fruiting. So, I mean, it is starting to push new growth because now that we actually have water this year, uh, I give it some fertilizer and I really want to kind of um, want this tree to play catch up. The other thing you'll see on here, this is some of the pest pressure I've been talking about. You'll see these lesions on here. These aren't disease, this is decayed of damage, which we have a lot of, and that's healed over. And this really sets the tree back. So I'm hoping we can kind of outvigor um, some of these minor or less serious pest issues and get a nice healthy tree that's gonna be able to overcome this. Another muscadet. Um, this is another one that I'm really excited about. Seems more and more promising. This is an American cider apple variety called Cronebush, which was apparently found as a chance seedling in, I think, Minnesota somewhere. It's said to be a bittersweet apple. And so far, this is probably the first year I've had a significant fruit crop. Uh, this guy's on G11, and I think he was planted in 2017. So a year after most of these other guys. It's got a lot of fruit, a lot of nice sized fruits all over this guy. Um, he's kind of got a very weird, very uh, droopy, almost like a limber twig type of uh, growth pattern. 
I did sample one of these fruits last year after it had been picked for a few weeks, and the specific gravity was over 1070, which is insane. It's like, uh, it's very sweet for an apple, a lot of bricks. Seems to be mostly disease and pest resistant. There is, you know, of course, uh, some nuisance with um, the leaf rollers, but overall, it seems it's looking like it's going to be a very productive apple. So I'm excited about that one. Um, this is another crone bush. That's my other crone bush. Nice looking apple. Um, that's the other Harrison. This one didn't fruit this year, but it's got a lot of healthy growth. Um, this is one I've got a ton of, and I know it does really well here, and it always has, and this is a Puget Spice on G222. I've got like seven or so of these. It's uh, supposedly a cross between uh, Akeem and Christine, two regular apples, and it is a small apple. It's basically a crab, um, about the size of a small plum or a very large cherry. It's said to be a bitter sharp, so high acid, high tannin, but also high in sugar. I think the ones I tested were around 1064 or 1066. Again, this one fruits every year, which is really nice, and. Although this tree has been in the ground five seasons, it stayed quite small. And you know, that's probably because it's had um, insect damage from the boars, but also just because it's fruited so heavily. This guy here and this guy here, these are both Michelin, which are um, bittersweet cider apples, supposedly originating in uh, France, but quite popular in uh, England and maybe not known outside of outside of France. Um, these guys are, I guess, disease susceptible to fire blight. I think. And I, earlier, I cut off an infected spur. Oh, uh, here's another one. That's another spur right there. Gotta clip that off tomorrow. Um, let me just rip it off here. I can. You know, I'm not crazy about this apple. It's doing well this year, but um, really, I can handle all the other diseases. Scab, which is a very low pressure here, um, it's completely manageable. But fire blight is a disease that will kill a tree or severely maim it. So it's not something I really want to have to deal with. I'm trying to do things hands off here. Um, Here's another muscadet over here, and this is uh, this is the area that had the overflow from the well. So that's this really weird, silty sh shit down here. I tried to cover it with compost after I scooped a lot of it out here to try and uh, improve the soil and get it back to something usable. This one I'm also quite excited for. Um, this is Duke's Normandy, which I think means soft. D O U X Normandy. It is a French cider apple that I don't really know much about. These are on Bud 9. I've got a couple of these. I don't really want Bud 9, but that's what they had this variety on. Uh, this one, I've seen no evidence of disease, uh, no evidence of fire blight. Um, of course, since it's on Bud 9, it's coming to fruiting very quick. Nice little apples. Supposed to be high in, in sugar and tannin, which we need. And we're seeing good growth on this, this year, so we'll see. This hacked back tree here was a Harry Masters jersey, or is a Harry Masters jersey on M7. It had fire bite last year that made it into the central leader, so I had to cut it off. Um, I'm gonna try and fertilize it heavily this year, get lots of water, give it to grow back, try not to let it flower next year, and try to get this a nice, vigorous tree. Um, and then once it's nice and healthy and vigorous, you know, say no fertilizer, try and limit the vegetative growth and focus on fruiting and flowering. It's another Duke's Normandy. This one doesn't have any fruit, but you can see it's a very pretty tree. It's very healthy. Nice dense canopy. This guy right here, I'm not positive, but I believe this is a Klaus, which is a Spanish cider apple. I think it falls in the category of bittersweet or bitter sharp. Um, I think this is on G202. Uh, I have a lot of ho high hopes for this one. This isn't my only tree. You can see, um, got some nice new growth coming on. 
Uh, we've got a pretty decent fruit set. I had a couple of these on a different rootstock, and then one eleven last year, and they ripened really, really late, like end of November. But they were small, very intense, flavored, nice late, late cider apple. So a lot of these newer trees, I gave a nice dose of fertilizer this year, and we'll be giving them lots of water to try and get them uh, into a nice healthy state. So not a lot of fruit on this guy this year. Um, I'm, no, they're falling off, it's okay. But I am focusing on trying to get a healthy tree. This is another one. Um, this guy right here is fairly interesting. This was uh, sold as Foxwell, which is a famous English bitter sharp cider apple. Although the seller um, labeled it as faux, well, or faux Foxwell, indicating that there was a mix up. And apparently, when Fox Whelp was released from the germplasm in Geneva, New York, there was some sort of mix-up, and what was released as Fox Whelp wasn't really the real Fox Whelp, so they call it Faux Whelp, or Faux Fox Whelp. Um, nevertheless, this has got a nice fruit set. It's a very beautiful apple so far. You know, nice ribbed, striped apple. Very upright, like it doesn't want to produce any laterals just wants to grow straight up and uh it's got a decent fruit set this year kind of hard to see in the camera but uh no disease issues really no pest problems so you know even if it isn't the real fox but if it's something that's usable and healthy i'm happy with it this is another rain day palm on g222 see yeah of course nice fruit set nice fruit set Another thing I kind of like about this is it doesn't overset fruit. Lots of these trees will set tons of fruit and you think you're going to have a great year and they'll drop a whole bunch. Um, this one just seems to set the right amount for the tree so far. Uh, this guy right here, I have three of these. This is Major, which is a British uh, tripoid cider apple. It's an earlier bittersweet and it's said to produce a nice soft uh, cider apple. See, this guy got hacked, hacked back quite a bit. This one had lots of shoot blight that made it to the stem, so I had to cut it all off. Um, nevertheless, it's a very vigorous grower. It's very healthy, as tripoid apples tend to be. You can see here we got lots of new growth. We gave it a nice dose of fertilizer and lots of water. And so this one isn't fruiting this year because I cut off most of the fruiting spur wood, but if we, we'll look at some of the other ones later. It's just covered in fruit. This is a graph that I did, and I lost the tag, but I know it's on G890. And looking at the leaf structure, compared to what I have here, I'm pretty sure this is Duke's 90. So I'm really digging G890. It seems to be a little more hardy than some of the other rootstocks. It's, if you look on the spectrum of dwarfing, uh, to semi-dwarfing, you know, it's semi-dwarf, but it has some of the vigorous qualities of, you know, say, MM, MM111 or M7, so. Really happy about this, how it's doing. Gave it a good dose of fertilizer, lots of water. I'm gonna produce a big vigorous tree with a nice central leader and then let it fruit. This is a uh, Wixen on MM111. Wixen just does great out here. This is a nice healthy tree. Not a lot of fruits this year, but that's not my focus. I wanna grow a happy, healthy tree. This is another American cider apple. This one's called uh, Campfield. Also originating on the East Coast, and uh, this dude is also on Bud9. Um, had a couple fruits on it this year. All my camp hills did, but I knocked them off just because I want the tree to focus on growing healthy and recovering from the drought stress it underwent the last year. So you can see nice, healthy leaves, big, healthy green leaves, and um, good growth so far, you know, maybe six inches, and we've got some nice uh, buds forming at the top, so it's ready to go again. This dude right here, I've got a couple of these. These are uh, Hislop crab apple, and these are all on M7. This is an early ripening variety. This one has had a little bit of fire bite, but it tends to lignify it off real quickly. It doesn't seem to be that much of an issue. Um, I guess this falls under the bitter shark category. I haven't actually sampled the fruit, but these are tend to be alternate bearing. And so meaning they have um, on their on years, very heavy crops. <coughs> Excuse me. And on their off years, 
whether you like crops or no crops. So this one's got a decent crop. You can't really see it too well in the light, but um, it's doing well. I got a lot of these too, so here's a good example. This branch is covered in fruit. This guy right here is, you know, as we get to the bottom of the orchard here, these are where the more semi-standard trees are. This is Baydan or Baydan de Part on G935. This guy fruited last year, I believe, but he also had some shoot blight in some kind of weird places. <clears throat> so I had to hack him back quite a bit, which is a bit of a bummer, but you know, I want to completely remove any fire blight inoculum from the orchard so that if conditions are right in the subsequent seasons, there's no inoculum source locally. Um, since hacking it back, you know, I'm seeing good growth on the tree and it looks overall happy and healthy. So it's a bummer because apparently Badan is supposed to have some resistance or some tolerance to fire blight, but that doesn't seem to be corroborated by the evidence I have. It's another camp field, another camp field. This is my other Haymaster jersey, and this one escaped fire blight uh, because it didn't flower last year, so there wasn't really an entry point. Um, so we'll see how that does. And that's a grafted. Um, G890 domain. This little dude's short because he's in the shade here, but it's okay. It's more of a nursery spot. This is another G890 rootstock called Graph Next Spring. Like I guess I had real tough little dudes. Got a couple of those. <clears throat> this is another um, Baydan part, and this one also had, you know, some shoot blight that I had to cut out of the central leader. Um, but this one did flower this year, and it's got. Quite a few fruits for how much I hacked it back. So we'll see how it does, but it looks like it's going to be doing pretty well this year. Uh, we got another Puget Spice. They're hard to see because they're not colored up yet, but we are loaded with fruit on this dude. And let's continue into the more standard apple trees. Uh, this is another hips hislop on M7. All my hislops are on M7. This one is fruiting quite lightly this year, um, but that's okay. There are some fruit up there, but it's uh, not crazy heavy. This one's a little sparsely leafed, and that's, you know, because it's in the shade. Not a big deal. Another hislop on M7. Oh no, this is not a hislop. This is, uh, this is another big dandy part. Um, this one, however, did not fruit this year, so you can see Real nice foliage, good growth, nice central leader ish. It's also another hislop on M7. Nice looking little fruits. Um, we'll kind of go into here. This guy right here is a. Ah. This is a, I believe this is either a Domain or a Nihau on MM111. And look at that trunk, you know, that's a boom, 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 solid trunk, stands up to the wind, no problem. Less water than most of the trees. And that dude is just reaching for the skies. Uh, no fruit on this one this year, that's okay. Uh, these more vigorous root stocks tend to flower a little bit later. Um, but if we go over here, we have another uh, domain on MM111. And again, look at that. It's a, that's a nice rootstock there. Boom, boom, boom. Batman improved. Um, and this guy did fruit this year. So, so domain is another old French cider apple. And it is said to be a bitter sharp, meaning it is both high in tannin and acid. And has an appreciable level of sugar so this one's got nice little apples on it all the way up again can't really see that well because of the light up the central leader and all along the side branches some of these guys do have damage from the leaf rollers but overall i am very very happy with the fruits set on this. It's not overly set and it's a big, vigorous tree. And again, as far as I can tell, no instances of fire blight. So this looks like it might be a real winner. Sour cherry. 
Another moose cadet that I hacked back real bad because the fire blight and it didn't fruit this year. I'm cool with that. Just want them to be healthy so they can pull through these things. Another moose cadet, a sweet cherry tree, Kirsten sweet cherry that's just going freaking bonkers. It needs to be cut back way bad. Um, this is, so this is what kind of got me on GA90. This is a gold rush which is a modern apple that's very disease resistant, but oh man, oh man, is this a tasty, tasty apple. When you pick it off the tree in late November, it's very sharp, like a Granny Smith, and incredibly sweet, like a golden russet. And it stores really well, so if you keep this in your fridge in the crisper, and you take one of those out in like, you know, February or March, it's just a sugar bomb that's crispy and crunchy, and it's awesome. And this one doesn't have a lot of fruit on it. You know, it's got a few. What I really like here is so nice size trunk down there. And I've done very minimal pruning on this as I have all my trees. But look at that. A really nice central leader. And if we go down the tree on the fruiting branches, look at these laterals. So they're just screwing straight out, which means they're going to be able to handle a lot of fruit without snapping. I didn't train them, it just has that natural growth habit. So. Really impressed by the G890. I think that's a worthwhile rootstock in these more uh, trout prone areas. This one right here, also on MM111. Look at that trunk. This is Nihao, uh, early, bittersweet. This one's kind of grown kind of funky. We've got a lot of blind wood in here, you know, crossing each other. So in the wintertime, I'm going to kind of cut that guy out. Probably cut that guy out. Um, this one hasn't fruited yet, but it's really growing really well. So I think, you know, we'll see, but it could be a good match for here. And then this one, I can't remember what it is. Let's see here. This is a little copper tag. Ah, this is another domain on MM11. This one didn't fruit this year, but again, nice upright growth. Very healthy tree and uh, very tough. That's what I like about these vigorous root stocks. They don't need the baby. Now well, this goofy looking thing down here. I want to show you that graft union. This is a dabinet. This is my only dabinet. This is on a P118, which is basically a full-size rootstock. This one had some really weird dieback, and I wanted to call it fire point, but I don't think that was right. It died way back to here. You can see this weird sort of, this weird sort of lesion running down the side here. I thought it was dead, but I left it, and it's almost healed over, and it's kind of grown into this Really vigorous, really healthy, weird looking bush. And we even set a couple of fruits over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it grow this summer. And it's definitely don't wanna keep this shape because that's not productive for a fruit tree. But what I'm gonna do and then in the, in the winter time or the early spring is try and prune it back into something uh, much better as a compost. Batman likes lying on a compost. So, yeah, interesting tree. Here's another hislop. It's taking an off here. I mean, this one looks good. It's like one or two fruits on here, but we'll see how that does with cider. If hislop makes a good slider, I'd be very happy because uh, it's a vigorous tree on M7. So, anyway, that's where we are. So, we got some hops in here, and there's a few I want to touch on real quick. One I'm really, really excited about is this sad looking dude. This is a, a selection of Malus Seversi, which is the wild ancestor to the modern day apple, native to the mountains in Kazakhstan and Southern China and the other stands around there. And um, this is the first year we got fruit. So we got nice fruits. It's said to be similar to a seeding, uh, eating apple, this one. And it's on MM111. This one was also said to be resistant to fire blight, but I did have some shoot blight the other years that had to be cut out. So that's why it looks all goofy. Um, but I'm real excited to try that, even if it's a gross apple, just, just to see what it's like. So nice, pretty fruits here in June. I imagine since they're this big already, these probably ripen at the end of summer rather than fall. But what I want to do is uh, plant the seeds from these guys because these are open pollinated by cider apples. So I think a Malice Seversi uh, cider apple uh, cross could be very interesting to have some of those wild resistant genes uh, plus cider apple genes. And here's another G890 rootstock. I'll cut back and graft over. It's a tough little tree. 
Ah, and here's the major, the Dinicate Blight. And this is how it fruits. Like, it is covered in fruit. Every single branch is like this. Just covered in fruit. So, I hope it's going to do okay here. Just hoping I have to fire with it often. And then this is a Roxbury Russet in here. I think this is on M9, it's from a nursery. Kind of crossing over a little bit. Um, this one's done real well. It tends to be alternate bearing, but got a nice fruit set on here this year. Really tasty eating apple. Yeah, yeah, seems real good. And then as far as Malice Versi goes again, this is a seedling Malice Versi. I think it's about three years old that I grew from seed. This is one here. Seems to be vigorous, seems to be more drought tolerant than the other trees. And it kind of has this spindly uh, bush structure, which is kind of interesting. Here are my other three seedling malice versus that are all pointed way too close to each other. This is one. This is two. This is the most vigorous here. And this little dude, this is three. So uh, come winter or fall, I'll probably dig up the two side guys and move them they're getting a little too close but I'm just really interested in them for the genetics of the, the apple trees and it's interesting while they look similar they do look distinctly different like look how small and, and, and almost spindly these uh, spurs are on this guy almost like thorns and then compare them to this guy which is similar but you know, the leaves are different and it's just very interesting to me so that's most of the trees um, I'm mostly doing this just so I can have a little visual aid or visual cue for the next time I'm back here to look at my fruits just to kind of you know see how things did kind of maybe draw some conclusions so that's about it Batman's looking for cherries and to apples, raw apples to pluck off the tree and uh, yeah so let's see how they can same go. Thanks for saying.